I have had a unique joy of hiring people to work as videographers for me. And it's always a enriching and eye-opening experience to see the vast quantity of talent that is in the San Francisco Bay Area, people from all over the world who just want to take in a couple of bucks on the weekend, want to work, want to practice their skills, art students, ex-photographers, all sorts of fascinating people. So here's a few tips on how to shoot for the editing room to make sure you have exactly what you need for post-production. Thank you very much for watching. A very common mistake for young shooters who don't edit their own material is they shoot way too short. Such as, okay, that's something I want to shoot. Okay, grab the tripod, put it here, uh, turn the camera on, start recording, oh, double check the focus, um, ooh, ooh, white balance, okay, uh, focus moved a little bit, okay, and I'll get the frame, and we're done. Now, if you're paying attention, only the last two seconds of that would have been usable, properly framed up and in focus. So what you need to put in your head is you need to shoot long. You need to get the frame, focus, white balance, everything that you're considering done, and then hold that shot for 10 seconds, at least 10 seconds. If you're shooting a shot that is gonna be a master shot, is going to be the first or last shot in the video, you should probably hold it for 30 seconds. But every individual shot within should be 10 seconds uninterrupted without all the nonsense at the beginning or at the end. I'm a big fan of filming in variable frame rates. When filming interviews, of course, I just keep it at the set 24 frames per second because that's how it's going to be presented and I almost never do speed changes in an interview. But when you're filming B-roll, that is a great time to up the frame rate because many times there will be actions that will be so brief that you just need to stretch them out to really let them have an impact. And a great trick is when you're filming still lifes, when you're filming just static compositions, if you really up your frame rate, especially if you're going handheld, that's a great way to smooth out any jitteriness. And if you stabilize that, I don't think anyone's ever gonna notice. Many times having a higher frame rate when you're doing a very fast cutting video might be redundant and you might never use the variable frame rate, but it's always good to have. And I think it makes stabilization a lot better. And it always gives you more options to use that footage in other projects in the future. If you have your own highlight reel or cinematographer's reel, hey, you'll be happy you shot in a different frame rate then. When you're shooting, always make sure that you have multiple intro and outro shots. Always plan those shots. If you introduce an event, a building, a happening by showing the building appearing in a certain way, try to reverse that shot for the outro. But if that doesn't work, get traditional shots, get some that are static, get some that uh, move, some that are running in, some that are pulling out, all sorts of things. If you have a drone, use it. If you're using a gimbal, use it. Use as many different options as possible. You're probably only going to pick one or two, but if you get the perfect shot that lines up with the edit, that is going to be the best. People's attention are largely focused on the material at the very beginning and at the very end. So that's when you need to wow them. You need to shoot coverage. You need to shoot as many angles as you think you might need. 
One Hollywood director once referred to this as getting all the important shots that they need and then just machine gunning as many angles as possible until their time runs out. It sounds a little crazy, but I am certain that is a huge relief on the editing room, not having to tell people, oh, you missed this shot, you're going to go have to go back and reshoot, then just to have so many different options to choose from. Coverage is kind of inherently wasteful, but it's diligent. You don't keep an earthquake kit in your house because an earthquake is going to happen today. You do that in case. It's the exact same thing with coverage and B-roll. You film all this extra footage in case you really need it. So if you have the time and if you have the energy to do so, get all the coverage you can. I'm an editor. There's never enough coverage. When you've shot enough footage to fully cover an event, to fully cover whatever it is that you're trying to get, that's when you can really get creative. You can shoot things that are pure chaos. If you want to film through a fish tank, do it. If you want to film through a wine glass as wine is being poured into it, do it. If you want to get the camera right into the middle of the dance floor and see people around just throwing their bodies in every direction, do it. That's when you can get the really experimental and crazy shots. Those might not appear in the final video, but when they do, they are just a slap of energy that just electrifies the whole video. That's when you can really try something different, and again, you can really get something for your demo reel. So, chaotic footage, chaotic moments, and experimentation. It's one of the last things that you should focus on, but when you've done the rest of your job perfectly well, yeah, then you can have some fun. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Bruner of Brogan Video. Remember, at its best, video is a tool for genuine communication between people, as it should be. So, get out there and share your heart.